So today is finally the day. I'm gonna take the back of my pickup and I'm gonna start to convert that into a camper. And I'm ultimately gonna share all the steps I take along the way to convert my pickup. I'm gonna try to do this in a very comprehensive manner. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. I have all the materials behind me, four sheets of plywood, very minimal tools. I think this is gonna be a build that pretty much anyone can do. And let's get started. Before we get into this, let's jump over some blueprints I made and I can describe what we're about to do here. So there's gonna be two major units to this build. We are gonna have the bed structure on the left and a shelving unit on the right. If we look at the top of this, we are gonna have two main storages in the bed structure itself. We're gonna have one big chest drawer and another one to segment some smaller things. If we turn it around and look at the shelving unit now, this is gonna have four storage compartments. A large storage in the back, another one on the side, and if we flip it over to the front, this is gonna have two storage compartments, a smaller shelf and then a pull-out drawer. In addition to the chest storage of the bed structure, we are also gonna have a pull-out drawer that can be opened. So this drawer can essentially be pulled out, and in addition to that, we are gonna have another slider that can be pulled out to used as a working surface, a cutting board, you name it. Those are the plans. Let's jump into it and see what tools we're gonna to use. So there's a lot of ways for you to get this done, but I kept it really simple. So I feel like everyone is gonna have access to these tools. And if you don't, these are all really useful, versatile tools that you can use for anything and are definitely worth picking up. So for starters, most of my cuts were done with a circular saw as well as a rip saw. Some of the other things I used in this build were a belt sander, a drill, a Dremel, because I didn't have a jigsaw. So to get those really unique cuts done, I just used a Dremel and there's not too many. Other than that, I used pretty standard equipment like measuring tapes, rulers, a T ruler, just to help me line up and measure out 90 degrees. But some pretty simple stuff. Uh, in the last major thing, and probably the most crucial thing in this build, is Craig's pocket hole jig. This is what I use to support and screw in every single structure of this build. Now, of course, if you have access to table saws, jig saws, anything like that, it can make this build a lot easier for you. So, of course, you can use that stuff. With that, let's cover materials, and then we'll jump into the build. So I was able to complete this build for about $375. And that accounts for five plywood boards, five packs of Craig pocket hole screws, some drawer guides, hinges, latches, a pre-stain, a stain, lacquer, and that is pretty much it. I think I had some like wood screws and small things, but for about $375 to $400 and a lot of your time, you could build this yourself. For this build, I am going to be working with a 2008 GMC. It has a six foot, six inch bed, if anyone's interested. So for starters, we are going to drop in a floor. And this floor, you might be wondering, why do I need a floor? Well, the floor is going to help me create a nice, solid surface that I can build off of. It's also going to provide a couple other benefits that I'll mention once we wrap this up. Uh, but one of the biggest ones is it's going to flatten out that floor so I don't have to work around these grooves, which just in anyone who's done a build without a floor, those have to drive you crazy. <laughs> But so we're going to do this in two pieces. And so pretty much the only things you have to worry about is the wheel well. Everything else should be more or less pretty straight. There is some narrowing as we go to the back of the tailgate. And so I jotted that all down. I set my circular saw so it's cutting just below the plywood board. And what this allows me to do is cut on the floor. So you can see I put this foam mat down and that way I can just do my cuts right here, not worry about having to elevate it and hit the floor. So I am new to woodworking, hence not having many tools. And this is actually my first project. So I learned so much along the way and you'll see a lot of techniques I'm using that are probably not best practice, but um, I'm putting this out there just to show everyone, don't let inexperience stop you. Just, you gotta get out and you gotta try to do it. There's, you're not gonna learn just thinking about it all the time. Sometimes you just gotta set it in motion and go for it. And if you fail a few times, so what? It's part of the learning process. So don't let that stop you guys. Just get out there and do it. 
Okay, so I made it just a bit too wide. I'll measure that out, shave off a little bit from both sides, and then replace this. Perfect. So I got the first floor in. I'm gonna put the second one in. This is the easy part. It's gonna get technical once I start building off of this. So with the floor done, we can see that it makes a nice flat surface to work off of in addition to that. So the floor is gonna provide three major purposes. For one, it provides an easy working surface so we don't have to deal with these grooves. Two, it kind of provides a safety measure. So there is gonna be some moisture in this truck. I have sealed as much as I could, but you know, in case some water gets in there, seep out of the floor onto these grooves on the bottom, and flow out of the truck. And lastly, it's gonna hold everything together. It's gonna to make this unit one. So the three major purposes of this floor is it provides protection, it makes building easier, and it also provides structure. That done, we're gonna move on to the bed frame. So we're gonna cut out two long boards that are the length of the bed, and this is gonna make up the frame of the bed itself. If you guys are finding any use in this video at all, please make sure to go down below and hit that like button. It's free and I have sunk just a ridiculous amount of time into this video. So it would definitely be appreciated. So with those cut out, we laid them across, got our measurements and cut those to length. Okay, I just hit the point where I have completely wrapped up the floor. I've also completed the boxes, which you just saw me build. This is essentially, eventually gonna have a flat top over it. And that's gonna be both the bed. And I'm also gonna make it into sort of a drawer system. The next step is to use this guy right here. Uh, so this is really going to be my lifesaver of this whole operation. This is going to allow my work to be sturdy, quick, and relatively painless as far as making it goes. I'm going to link this down below. So this is basically going to allow me to anchor everything together. This is how a lot of IKEA furniture works. This is going to create a pocket in the side of the board. And, and so basically I can use a screw that's going to go through that pocket and anchor itself into whatever board is below it. And so it, it provides a really sturdy support and in my mind it is just the way to go. If you don't have much experience like I do and you want to have a very sturdy corner, the Craig's pocket hole system is going to be the way to go. Um, I'm, this isn't sponsored by them or anything, it's just after doing my research and knowing my skill level, this is going to be a crucial part of the build and it wasn't that expensive. Uh, so I'll link that down below if you guys do want to check this out and if you're doing this for yourself, good option. Okay, so as far as where the placement of these screws go, I would do with it them on opposite ends, every six inches to 10 inches, depending on how much use and uh, sturdiness that particular board needed. So I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna mount that and clean out the back of the bed, and that's pretty much gonna wrap up day one. I'm happy with the start that we have, and I will see you guys tomorrow, or I will see you in about one second when we start day two. <laughs> Day two was all about construction of what we already have, and that way I have a frame laid out in the bed to build off of. Now, uh, we have some pocket hole grooves in the floor itself that we use to attach the two pieces to each other. And off of that, we put the framing of the bed unit. I just pretty much needed to decide how long I wanted to make this bed based on how much sleeping space I think I wanted. I decide on about 34 inches for myself. Instead of drawing measurements on the floor itself, I just decided, hey, I'll just use a scrap piece of wood, cut a measurement log, and then when I put everything in the truck, I can pretty much just align it up using this board.
So relatively simple method, got those installed. The next thing that we need to do is we are gonna build some dividing spaces in here because this is gonna be a storage compartment. So I cut out one, made sure it fit, used that to draw out a bunch of others. And then sanded those so they were nice and flat uh, using a belt sander. And after that, those were ready to be installed after putting some pocket holes in all of them. We can just go ahead and put those in. That is gonna wrap it up for this section of the build. Now I am gonna be putting out all of the other ones and those are gonna come out weekly. So if you wanna see that, make sure you go subscribe below. And if it's already up, click right here. Again, go down below and hit that like button. All said and done, I'm gonna have sunk about three to 400 hours into making this video series. So a like would be greatly appreciated and I will catch you guys in the next section of the build.